Thank you, everyone. I appreciate you being here this afternoon. Uh, as you said, I'm Bob Brillen, President and CFO of MJ Ventures, uh, Vapen MJ Ventures. And I, I do have some bound uh, materials up here. If you want to take those and make notes on them and have them for later, you're welcome to come up and get them. So what I want to start with is why I'm here today and, and hopefully why you're here today. I want to give an investor awareness about our company. We just went public in May of this year uh, on the CSE. We just got DTC approved on the OTCQX, and that's because we're already profitable. So as you can see, our, our symbols are VAPN up in Canada and VAPNF here in the United States. So I'm sure you've all read the disclaimer, and I'll give you several minutes to read that. Uh, we're going to start with the investment highlights, just so you understand who we are to start with. Uh, Vapen is a brand. It's a leading, one of the leading brands in Arizona. So the Arizona market potential is very large. Right now, it's just medical. November 2020, it'll go recreational. It's the third largest medical right now in the United States, uh, doing $500 million a year. Uh, we are actually highly profitable and a growing business. And, and yes, I said profitable. So our revenues over the last three years have gone 10, 14, 18, and then this year it's on a run rate for 27. So we did 6 million in 17 EBITDA, 6 million in 18 EBITDA this year on a run rate of 8 million with our core Arizona business. We're vertically integrated, so cultivation, extraction, edibles infusion, wholesale, and retail dispensary. The wholesale is important because at the retail we sell under Herbal Wellness Center. That's our dispensary and it does very, very well in Arizona. But the wholesale side is much more important for us, especially going forward. It's under the Vapen brand and we sell to all the other dispensaries, the majority of the uh, 108 dispensaries currently open in Arizona, and we're on their shelves as Vapen. And that's our extracts, our cartridges, uh, and our kitchens products. And I'll go through that more in a minute. Uh, the Vapen brand growth is going into several states. We also have the retail growth, the Vapen CBD specific growth that we'll talk about, and then also celebrity influencers. This is something that's very unique to our company, and we'll kind of go through what that means to us. So vertically integrated, everybody understands that, seed to sale. Uh, the, the important part there, though, is we do everything internally. We have our own kitchen, we have our own extraction, and we have our own wholesale street team that goes out there and sells to all the other dispensaries in Arizona. That becomes much, much more important in a minute. Vaping brands, we have Vaping Clear, which is our THC. We have the Vaping Extracts, which is our shatter shatters and waxes. The Kitchens, which is the infused edible products, which we also have CBD, CBD infused. Vaping CBD, we have the infused lotions, tinctures, balms, CBDs, and cartridges. Again, cartridges is unique. One very important item here is the Vaping Inhaler. So we have THC, CBD inhalers. These inhalers are now patented. We got the patent about two months ago that we announced. We'll talk about the vaping brand, vaping brand growth, and this is, is in THC and CBD. So we're going into California, Nevada, Oklahoma, Massachusetts, and Ohio. These are all THC extraction and distillate operations with partners. So we're not doing acquisitions, we're gonna partner, do joint ventures. Most of these average about 50-50, where we're splitting the profits and the revenues. We're also going into Kentucky, Arkansas, Hawaii, and Jamaica on hemp extraction for the CBD side. So as you can see where this is going is we've really done our good job in Arizona, but we also found out what we do really well, and that's extraction that other people really want to partner with us on. So why do it this way? Well, we're identifying the marijuana license holders. You know, we're pro proposing these strategic alliances and then we put together an alliance that's a 50-50, or 40-60, whatever makes sense for who's bringing most to the party. What we're bringing is we are bringing our supply our standard operating procedures. We also do the equipment and the branding. So again, what that means is we're bringing the vape and brand to their state. So whether it be Ohio, Massachusetts, uh, Oklahoma, that vape and brand will now be sold into the other dispensaries, not just the dispensary that we're working with to do this deal, but the other dispensaries at wholesale. An example in Arizona, we sell to Cureleaf, we sell to Harvest, we're on their shelves. We want to do the same thing in these other states. 
the partner agrees to bring in the building, the biomass, and the license, and they put that into the, into the deal for us. Uh, the, the LLC will manage the wholesale distribution, so we'll be bringing the vaping brand to that state. We'll be bringing a lot of, I guess, um, IP, if you will, that we'll be generating over the several years that we'll be uh, bringing into the products into that state. So why do it this way? Obviously quicker to market, low risk, a lot less capital required, because we're putting in only about a million dollars average uh, equipment into these deals. Uh, and as I said, we went public in May of this year. We got listed. We did private placement uh, for that first six months of about $10 million. That's what we're using to actually buy this equipment and put it into place. And fortunately, we were cash flow positive going into that, so we're not in the same situation as a lot of the big MSOs out there and, and burning cash. So besides entering a proven market, we now have the vape and brand multi-state. So here's a, kind of a target expansion that we started out with this year. And as you see, there's several uh, states on there that we're targeting where we believe we're going to be into very quickly. Fortunate for us, and also in Arizona, like I said, in 2020, it's going to turn recreational. What we saw happen in Nevada was a 10 times revenue bump on day one. Also what we saw were edibles, were a big jump in the, in the product mix. So we, that's why we got into edibles two years ago, because we knew this was coming this way. So we're expecting a lot for our Arizona operations. But going forward, what you'll see, the white is Arizona. That's how it's grown over the years and what, it, what it's done for EBITDA. The gray there, so these are not just hopes and dreams and targets. These are actually inked deals. We haven't put out all the press releases on the specifics of every one of these, but these will, as you can see for us, will have some fourth quarter revenues in this year, and then next year it'll be the lion's share of our revenues is through these partnerships. A lot of this comes from our hemp deals. So with Arkansas, we've already announced that that's, that's at least $20 million over the next 12 months. We, the one in, um, oh, excuse me, that was Kentucky. The one in Arkansas is five times that large. It's 500 acres versus 100 acres. Then those come online here in the next November, December. And then most of the, because the harvest is now done, you'll have the extraction happen November, December, January, February, March. So that's when we see most of the revenues from those two um, ventures. So some of our products are unique. As I said, the inhaler, uh, it was patent pending, now it's patented, uh, and it's been announced. We obviously do cartridges, and we have the applicator, which has the same distillate in it. Uh, the one on the far right there is the X-Pod. We have the exclusive for that from C-Cell. Looks like Darth Vader, but it goes into a, a separate little battery. We have the vaping extracts, shatters and waxes. Uh, vape and CBD line, again, started this about two years ago. It's not a great uh, part of our revenue stream, but it's growing. Uh, one, of the, one of the interesting facts here is that the Jam Japan market, actually, you have to get approved for. We're one of five that has now been approved for Japan, and we've been shipping there for the last four months. Again, the inhaler in the CBD, but we have the tinctures, lotions, balms, cartridges. And again, cartridges is a little unique in the CBD line, but it's something that's one of our best sellers. On the kitchen side, we have the chocolate bars, syrups, snacks, uh, gummies, and candies. And, and it's interesting because the, the, one of the people up here earlier were talking about their chocolate bars and how it doesn't taste like weed. Fortunately, we brought on a chef that has done the same thing. And so she's won several different uh, awards for us because the chocolate bars are phenomenal. We actually had one just recently. It's called Cookies and Scream for October and it was under the brand of Vampire Bites that we put it out there. It sold out through our wholesale partners, but it was a 500 milligram bar, because in Arizona we don't have limits. So uh, if you can imagine one little square being almost 50 milligrams, you better be a connoisseur if you're gonna have that. Um, we have the accessories, so we have the Vapen X, that's the battery with that uh, Darth Vader on top. We got the uh, V-Pen, V-Pen Diamond that we designed ourselves. Uh, made out of China. Uh, the palm is also through C-Cell. Interesting fact is we also buy our cartridges direct from C-Cell from China instead of going through the two distributors here that have the exclusivity. Because we were doing so much volume with them for the many years before this, uh, this company has been around since 2013 and has been doing this distillate since the beginning. Uh, 
and obviously we do some of the, the different colors, and we do this because these are our charity. So we give back to like the veterans, and we gave, gave back to the cancer awareness, and then the uh, LGBT. Here's what we talked about earlier. So when we say celebrity influencers, we're not talking about uh, paying these guys a million dollars to post for us, or paying them you know, $100,000. We're talking about unpaid celebrity influencers. How's that happen? It happens because friends of friends. The, the, the CEO and founder of this company has friends in LA that when he asks them for a favor, they do it. Uh, the biggest example was Cardi B. She, did a, she was doing a video, music video for herself in Florida. They invited the CEO down there. He brought our swag. She did then another music video with our swag on, with vape pens, with the hats. And he was t taping it with his phone, but also the editing guys. She said, if you want to pay the editing guys $5,000 to do this post-production for you, we did that and it's over 100 million views. So those are the type of things that you just can't pay for, if you will. Um, another one is Wiz Khalifa. These are all on our website if you would like to go see it at vapenmj.com. So it's, it's these different influencers, and they're, they're out there, they have millions of followers, they post about vaping. So when I go into a Massachusetts or Oklahoma uh, or Nevada, they already know about vaping, they've heard about it you know, through these postings. And so it's easier for me to get partners to sign on board at a 50-50 rate instead of probably a 30% rate if I didn't have that, that brand that really they expect to be good in their state. So, social media, again, ours is all organic. We have our followers push things to us. Uh, so I think it, right now we're over 75,000. The only one ahead of us was MedMen, and I think they probably spent $20 million to get there. We didn't. We didn't spend anything. Uh, Yearly, we throw industry parties. Again, we found this to be good. We'll do this in other states as we go there. On 420, we bring all the bud tenders, all the other dispensary owners. We rent out a whole hotel, make sure everybody has a great time that night, make sure they understand vaping products, get to use them, uh, and it, it turns out to be that it's the party talked about all year long. Same thing with the lifestyle parties. Again, we have some of these parties. And again, we don't spend a lot of lavish money on these. We have friends of friends that give us these mansions and we put on the party so it can be posted and people can see it. And everybody likes to have fun. So they want to see vaping and fun synonymous with each other. Uh, we have certain celebrity collabor collaborators. Um, Baby Bash is the newest one. We have Pilo. Uh, and what we do is, is they'll have a strain or they'll have a cartridge that's named after them. We charge 10% more, we give that 10% to them. So it's a, it's a wash, really, but it does drive business to the company. In Arizona, you can only have 2,000 square feet. So this, this is our dispensary. Uh, it's nice, but it's tough to get 3,500 people a week through there. Uh, when you're a medical company, you can only uh, do the card holders. And so in Arizona, again, 110, 115 degree weather, that's a problem. So 10 feet away, we have the wellness spot. We can't sell THC in here, but you can sure be buzzed when your, when your product is resi ready. You can go over there. We sell CBD, we sell Cokes and whatever. Uh, but it's a nice area too where we have a doctor come in. So if you need to be certified, you can come in and see that doctor and he, he can help you get certified. So we are big into customer service at Herbal Wellness Center and at Vape and MJ, just because we understand that that's what keeps the customer coming back. We have a lot of loyalty and, and that's been helping us grow. Uh, we have the 32,000 square feet indoor grow, we have a 3,000 square feet uh, extraction facility, and 2,000 square feet for our kitchen. And that's all here in West Phoenix, 40th Avenue and Indian School, if you know the area. The dispensary is about a half mile away from the cultivation and kitchen and extraction area. Research and development, we do have some of our own strains. We continually try to develop our own strains. We have some PhDs on staff. Uh, we have some people that have been in the business 20 years, I don't understand that because it wasn't legal that long ago, so not sure. Uh, product development, obviously always looking at stuff like the inhaler, different ingestion methods, different ways to get it to the consumer that will be convenient. Um, not sold on beverages yet, we've tried that as a test product, didn't go well. Um, same thing with dissolvable tablets, not, not really. So I, I'm interested as what's gonna be some of the winning things in the future, uh, but we'll, we'll see. Ty Wynn is the CEO chairman. He's been on board. He's started this back in 2013. It was a lottery process. One out of 10 applications got picked. 
he, he got very fortunate, picked that, and he was a real estate guy before this, kind of went all in on this at that point in time. My background is I've taken four different companies public here in the United States, had never done it in Canada before, and I'd always done it in technology type companies. But when we decided we were gonna go public, obviously you all know you have to have two different sides of the company. He wants to be the operator, doesn't wanna be out here doing this, I'm the one that's out here doing this and, and making sure we have this shareholder communication. Uh, and also with my background as a CPA and CFO for many years, I can answer the tough questions. We got some great direc directors. Uh, one of our directors is from Canada, uh, so he's actually helped us a lot on the, in the process. Got a great CEO on board. Matt Morgan is just a great advisor for us. He actually was with uh, Reef and Trike out of uh, Las Vegas. He grew it to 100 million in sales a year, uh, and now he lives down there in, in Arizona with us. Uh, Ty, as I said, you know I can't say enough about him. The guy is just, if you're in a room with him, you can't help but like him. That's why these influencers do what they do for him for free. You know, he's just that kind of guy that you'd want to be around. Uh, the big point is the last point there, he has a lot of industry relationships. So these partnerships that we're doing aren't just cold calls. These are people he's known for 10 years. And now all of a sudden it makes sense that we can, you know, work with them together and we can both make some money. Because they knew the cultivation side, they knew the dispensary side, but they really didn't understand the extraction and they didn't have a brand. We have our financial statements. Again, these are on our website. These are on CDAR uh, up in uh, Canada. So like I said, revenue is 14, 18, and then a run rate of about 27, 6, 6, and about 8 million. And this is the core business though. This does not include what we're gonna do with those partnerships. So the Vape and MJ Ventures capital structure, uh, and this is something that's gonna freak you out when you look at uh, Yahoo or something like that. This shows 80, about 82 million shares outstanding. It's because they don't show the 64 million that are held by myself and the CEO, because in, in Canada it has to be compressed. They're basically not tradable, so they don't have them uh, listed when they look at market cap. So that kind of wraps up. Um, the biggest thing I guess I would leave you with is our current market cap, I think is around 50 million. As you can imagine, like most people, about 45 days ago, we were about 120 million. Uh, we're not worried about that. We know we're gonna deliver the numbers. You know, the stock will take care of itself. Uh, right now, we're not out doing any equity finan financings, thank goodness. Um, but we're, you know, excited about where our numbers are going to be. Ba basically, look at our fourth quarter numbers, look at our first quarter numbers, uh, and hopefully you've gotten involved somehow. And, you know, dip your toe in, take, take a chance. Thank you.